All right, we are recording now and we are going to talk about some more things tonight about Jesus teaching us how to be good followers of him. But first we're going to sing a few songs. We'll sing the Sea of Galilee, see if everybody's got those motions down and how fast we can go. And then I've got a couple of songs I want to sing that go with our lesson tonight. You'll probably know them, but if you don't, they're real easy and you'll pick them up quick. So everybody get your fingers ready. I can see a few people across the top of my screen. Not everybody, but I can see a few. Here we go. <clears throat> There's a sea of Galilee. There's a sea of Galilee. There's a sea. There's a sea. There's a sea of Galilee. There's a boat in the sea of Galilee. There's a boat in the sea of Galilee. There's a boat. There's a boat. There's a boat in the Sea of Galilee. There are men in the boat in the Sea of Galilee. There are men in the boat on the Sea of Galilee. There are men, there are men. There are men in the boat on the Sea of Galilee. There are hands on the men in the boat on the Sea of Galilee. There are hands on the men in the boat on the Sea of Galilee. There are hands, there are hands, there are hands on the men in the boat on the Sea of Galilee. There are nets in the hands of the men in the boat on the Sea of Galilee. There are nets in the hands of the men in the boat on the Sea of Galilee. There are nets, there are nets. There are nets in the hands of the men in the boat on the Sea of Galilee. Here we go, ready, got your fish. There are fish in the nets in the hands of the men in the boat on the Sea of Galilee. There are fish in the nets in the hands of the men in the boat on the Sea of Galilee. There are fish, there are fish. There are fish in the nets in the hands of the men in the boat on the Sea of Galilee. Okay, we're gonna do it really fast now. You ready? <clears throat> there are fish in the nets in the hands of the men in the boat in the Sea of Galilee. There are fish in the nets in the hands of the men in the boat in the Sea of Galilee. There are fish, there are fish. There are fish in the nets in the hands of the men in the boat in the Sea of Galilee. Very good. I saw lots of motions. Good job. You guys are good at that song. All right, we're going to sing a couple more songs that have to do with go with our lesson tonight. We haven't sung these before in our Zoom calls, but you probably know them. So if you do, you can just go ahead and sing along. And if you don't, just listen because they're pretty easy to catch up to catch on to. They're kind of short. So <clears throat> The first one says, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Good job. Sometimes we sing a couple other verses with that, but we're going to stop with just that one tonight. And then the other song that we're going to sing tonight is one that you may have learned when you were a little bitty bitty child in Bible class because some of the little bitty children sing this one, but it's still a great song. So if you know it, sing along. If you don't, then just listen and you can learn it. <clears throat> it says, Jesus loved the little ones like me, me, me. Jesus loved the little ones like me, me, me. Little ones like me sat upon his knee. Jesus loved the little ones like me, me, me. Good job. If you remember that song, just practice singing that song some. Okay, if you want to unmute, you can go ahead and do that so that you can answer questions and help review what we've been talking about. Just remember that you do not want to talk unless you're answering questions because it, gets, it okay. makes it hard for other people to hear. Listen. So listen with our ears and not talk unless we're taking turns. 
All right, here we go. So we have been talking about learning to be Jesus' followers. And who can tell me what this says on our bulletin board? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Because we want to let's go be good followers of Jesus. Very good. So we've talked about three things already that Jesus taught his followers. And tonight we're going to talk about one more. And then next week we'll start something different because I don't think we could put much more on our bulletin board. So first we talked about this one. Who can tell me what this word says? Pray. 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 That's right. And Jesus taught his followers how to pray. Now when we pray, who are we talking to? God. To God. And do we need to use big fancy words? No. no, God understands all our words. We don't need big fancy words. Do we can only can we only pray in certain places? No. No, we can pray no. anywhere. Remember our, our pictures up here? This little girl's at church. This little girl's before she's eating her meal. A lot of times we pray then. This little boy is praying before he goes to bed. That's another time a lot of people pray. But this little boy is out on the playground, and this little boy is just up on the hillside. So anywhere you are, you can talk to God. Now, can you only talk to God at certain times? Is he only listening at certain times? No. God is listening all the time. The cool thing about God is he can hear everybody all at the same time. If all of you guys started talking at the same time, I would just hear gibberish. I would not be able to understand anybody. But God can hear all of us at the same time if we're talking at the same time to him. Even when we whisper. And what we're talking about. So it doesn't matter if other people are praying at the same time you are, that's fine. Now, if we're praying at church, it's good to be quiet because we want the other people to be able to hear what the person is saying who's leading the prayer. But when we're just talking to God, and sometimes we can do that without even saying the words out loud, we can just think what we want to say to God. And he knows because he doesn't need us to say it out loud for him to hear. So we talked about praying. Okay, the next week, we talked about this barn. Who can remember the story about the barn and what we learned? Share. We want to do what? Share. Yeah. Share. I heard somebody whispering that answer in the background. We want to share. Remember that that man had a really good crop and he had so much that he didn't have room in his barn. And so he thought, oh, I'll just tear down my barn and build a bigger barn. But Jesus said that was not the best answer. Jesus said the best answer would be to share with other people because there were other people that were hungry. So when we're a good follower of Jesus, we pray, we talk to God, we share the things that we have. Last week, some of you missed it, but some of you were here. We talked about this poor man. He has got band-aids all over him. What happened? He got hurt. He got hurt. How did he get hurt? <laughs> On your knee. On his knees? No, no, no. There were some bad men and there were some robbers who, who beat him up and stole his stuff. But somebody came along and was a good follower of Jesus. And what did that person do? Can you see this word? Ow. Okay. Ow. That's right. Ow. He was a good helper. It was the story of the Good Samaritan. You'll hear it called that sometimes. And this man stopped and helped the hurt man and took him to a hotel, took care of him, and then left money for the innkeeper to be able to keep taking care of him. So if we want to be good followers of Jesus, we're going to pray and talk to God, and we're going to share with people that don't have as much as we have, and we're going to help people that need some help. So tonight, we're going to talk about one more thing, and this may be one of my very favorite lessons. You can see I've got a big red heart on my board. A red heart. Mm -hmm. And then I've got a word right here. Can anybody see no. that? Love. No. Love. Oh, that's right. 
Jesus said if we want to be good followers, we need to love people. The Bible talks about loving people a lot, and Jesus really, really loved people. In our story tonight, there was a special group of people that he especially loved. And you might have a guess who that might be based on the songs that we sang. Um, John? I love John. Okay, let's, let's back up just a little bit and talk about Jesus some. Listen with your head. Everywhere that Jesus went, people followed him, big crowds of people. And they would crowd around him, sometimes because they wanted him to heal them. He, they wanted to get well. We're going to talk about that a little more next month. We're going to be talking about how powerful Jesus was. But they just wanted to be close to him and hear him and hear what he was saying and, and see the things he was doing. So everywhere he went, it got really crowded. And so his followers, his disciples, his special 12 followers, would try to make sure that they got people away from Jesus sometimes so that he would have a little bit of room. Because, you know, if you get real crowded people around you all the time, sometimes it can feel almost suffocating, almost like you can't breathe. And Jesus would have to stop and get away from the crowds and go talk to God sometimes. And the disciples knew that. And so in our story today, that's what was going on. There were a lot of people around Jesus and he was preach or teaching and, and healing and talking to all the grown-ups. And then some parents came and they had their little children with them probably little children about your age, maybe even younger than you, toddlers, little children. And the disciples saw them and they were going towards Jesus and they said, uh, what are you doing? And they said, well, we want our children to see Jesus and we want him to touch them and bless them and pray for them. And you know what those disciples said? They said, Jesus does not have time for that. He is busy teaching the grown-ups. Now, that's not exactly the way they said it, but that's basically what they were saying. And they were trying to send the parents away because they said, you don't have time for these little children. They didn't think the little children were important. And you know what? Jesus saw what was happening. And he said, stop. Fact, Jesus kind of got angry at the disciples. And he said, stop. Do not send those children away. Let the little children come to me. And so they did, and they were with Jesus, maybe sitting in his lap or sitting on his knee. How cool would that have been to sit in Jesus's lap? And he blessed those children, and then he said something that was probably a little bit surprising to the grown-ups that were around. Now, I'm going to read this out of my Bible because I want to make sure I say it exactly the way it's written down. <clears throat> it says, Jesus called the children to him and said, let the little children come to me and do not stop them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. So he basically was telling the grown-ups that they needed to be more like the little children who just wanted to come and see Jesus and be with him. And Jesus had time for that. The disciples didn't think he had time for that, but Jesus did. And he made sure that those little children got to come to him because he thought children were very important. And you know what? I think children are very important too. I love being able to teach you guys every week. I'm so glad you come to our Zoom class. So let's talk about, oops, I almost forgot. <clears throat> to help us remember that Jesus especially loved the children, I got a little boy. And a little girl. And a little girl right there on my heart to help us remember that Jesus loved the children and Jesus mm -hmm. wants us to love people too. Sometimes it's people that we might not even like very much, but Jesus wants us to love them the way he would love them. 
All right, so let's talk about what's in your activities. But first, before we do that, Tanya needs to remember to look at her notes. We're going to do our memory verse. We've been doing this memory verse for a few weeks now, so you probably know it. And the way. So remember, I'll say it, and then you say it. You can either say it with me or say it right after me. Yes. I am the way. In the way. Want to hear you? The truth. The truth. And the life. And the life. And the no life. No one comes to the Father. The Father. No one comes to the Father except through me. Except through me. Very good. That is telling us that when we are followers of Jesus, he is the way that we can get back to God and fix that big disaster. He's the only way for us to connect back to God. That's what that verse is telling us. It's a great, great Bible verse. All righty, let's talk about your activities. Your sheet tonight has lots of pictures of it. Some of them are pictures of things that might make us think about Jesus. There's a boat down here that kind of makes me think about the Sea of Galilee and the fish. And there's like a shepherd's staff right there, maybe. But what you want to is you want to color. Miss Tanya? Miss, who said Miss Tanya? Miss Tanya. Yes. Um, me. Um, and Ender are learning a new Bible verse this week. Oh, good, good. Well, it's good to learn lots of Bible verses. The Bible says we need to hide the word in our heart, and it's really good to learn Bible verses because sometimes when we're scared or when we just don't know quite what to do, we can remember those verses and know that that's what God talks to us. Not that one. The one. All right, so on our worksheet tonight, what it says for you to do is color the spaces that have children in them. So that means not the ladybugs the children. and not the star space. And when you do, the, the, the spaces you have colored is going to be the letter. And that letter will be the first letter in Jesus' name. Remember, who can tell me what the, the first letter in Jesus' name is? Name is. Day. Day. That's right. So if you color the letters that have the boys and girls in them, it's going to make a J. Right. Now listen, listen to your ears. Your craft tonight is to make a clock. Now, a lot of our clocks don't look like this anymore. A lot of our clocks just have numbers on them. But before that, Long time ago, when Miss Tanya was a little girl, all clocks kind of looked like this and had hands that helped us tell clock time. And which one is Okay, so you got a piece of paper a like this. Color. Okay, yeah. listen with your ears, please. Okay, listen, listen with your ears and be quiet. You can color the spaces and the things that are on the clock. It looks like different weather things. And then... You should have a paper fastener and two little pieces of black paper like this. And you'll put those together and fasten them in the middle of your clock to make the hands. So here's one that was made a long time ago. And once you do that, you can move these hands around to make it show different times. Right now, it's almost seven o'clock. So I'm going to move my little hand to the seven. My hands like to move together. Well, let me do it without it being holding up, and I think it'll work. Become a little girl in the next block. There we go. So I moved my little hand to point to the seven over here, and I moved my big hand up to the 12. That would be seven o'clock. So you can make a clock and you can get mom or dad or a big brother or sister to help you change the times and practice making different times. But what we want to remember is what's written at the top. It says, Jesus always has time for me. And then your stack, your stack is kind of a clock too. Something different when we have our 
Well, we have our class in the classroom, but I couldn't pack it up. So you have a bag, listen with your ears, listen, listen. You have a bag and it has a little tortilla in it. So you're gonna lay that down on a plate. And then you have another bag that's got some goodies in it. It's got something that's wrapped up in paper like this. And if you unwrap that, it's gonna be some Twizzlers. One of them's going to be longer than the other one. So those are going to be the mm -hmm. hands on the clock. And then you've got a bunch of Fruit Loops, which are just round. I can't get them where I can, where you can see them. Round cereal that are different colors. And you can take those and you've got a lot more Fruit Loops than you're going to need because there's only 12 that need to go on your clock. But you can take those and put them on your clock like you would the numbers. So like number one, two, three, four, five. On your tortilla clock, you can just spread your fruit mm -hmm. loops around the outside mm -hmm. and then take your you want to do that. and make the hands this and you'll have a clock that you can eat. What do you want to pick orange? Is it a clock okay. that you can eat? A clock that you can eat. I not want to get all right. and that's about all we have for tonight. Let me tell you a couple of things I want to tell you. Your packets for next month will be out on Sunday. Um, Miss Tanya still has to go put some things in them, but they're supposed to be ready for you to pick them up on Sunday. So make sure you look. This coming Sunday? <clears throat> this coming Sunday, yes, because next week we'll be in the next set of lessons. And our next set of lessons are pretty cool because my snack? about how Jesus was powerful. You guys know about superheroes, right? Well, Jesus was more powerful than any superhero we have ever learned about. And his power was real. Superhero power is really just make-believe. But Jesus' power was real. And we are going to learn mm -hmm. some things about what he did and how he showed how powerful he was. So make sure you pick up your packets on Sunday. If you can't get there on Sunday, let me know. And I will get one, mm -hmm. get your packet and get it to you somehow. I want to make sure everybody has their packets for next time. Yeah, packets on Sunday. All righty, and that's all I've got. If everybody wants to unmute, we will count to three and say goodbye to the boys and girls who are watching online. It'll be just kind of like if you ever go back and watch the video online, you'll get to hear everybody saying goodbye to you. Ready? One, two, three. Bye. Bye. Bye.